So hi, everybody. Like Ken said, my name is Evan Ariana. I am the regional manager for the Surfrider Foundation for Florida and Puerto Rico. Um, I live in Delray for the last eight years. I was the director of education at the Sandaway Discovery Center, just right over there on the beach. Um, I love to surf, I love the ocean. I'm a marine biologist, a uh, nidologist at heart. So I work with corals and jellyfish and other Medusa zoos, so really cool stuff. Um, but now I am the manager at Surfrider. So I thought today I would talk a little bit about what Surfrider Foundation does um, and really give you an overview of our programs because you know we've heard from a lot of different groups today about um, you know recycling, about corals, about the work that a lot of great conservational groups and organizations are doing to help our planet. But when it really comes down to it, it's not their full responsibility. It's not ability to even fix all the problems. Really, the only way we're going to make a difference in this world is if we have organizations like them, but also us who take individual responsibility, change our habits, and fight for the better good. Because that's the only way it's going to happen. You can try to restore all the corals you want, but if we don't fix what we're doing to the ocean, all their efforts could be in vain. So that's really what I want to focus about, the things we're doing, because all of our um, Surfrider chapters are volunteer-based, just everyday people devoting their time, their energy to saving our planet. So really quick, this is our foundation's mission. Um, we are dedicated to protection and enjoyment of the world's ocean, waves, and beaches through our strong, powerful activist network, highlighted for all people, um, all people all over the globe. So when I say the ocean waves and beaches, you know, a lot of people see Surfrider. They're like, oh, you guys surf. You're just surfers. But that was how it was founded. It was founded in 1984 at Surfrider Beach, Malibu, California, as you can imagine. But it's truly a grassroots story. It was five dudes literally surfing out in the water. And there was a lot of development up on Point Doom on the cliffs. And they started noticing a lot of storm runoff, a lot of construction materials, dirty water quality that were happening in their break. So, Literally, they got a bunch of their friends together. They went to City Hall. They had signs. They petitioned. They spoke in front of the council. And from that, Surfrider was born. Um, five guys. We are now all throughout the United States. We are also in eight different countries. There's a Surfrider Europe, Australia, Japan, Senegal, Chile, um, so many places. Here in the US, we have 81 chapters, um, volunteer chapters, 85 student clubs, and oh, like I said, international affiliates. And then we have 50 staff, including me and a bunch of other people, lawyers, scientific leads, um, you know, lobbyists, things like that, that help our volunteers and empower them to do the work for conservation. So really cool. I'll show you our Florida network. This is what we've actually, I noticed this. This is old because I now have a chapter right there. But these are our Florida chapters, um, all made up of volunteers. We have about 20,000 volunteers in the state of Florida. Um, active volunteers that do great work, all the way from the Florida Keys up to the First Coast, and we just added a Volusia Flagler chapter um, last year. We have the Sun Coast covering Sarasota up to Clearwater, and then our poor little Emerald Coast out of our time zone, right over here. Um, they are doing a lot of work, especially after the hurricane now. Their cleanups and their uh, water quality testing is very important, as you can imagine. Um, I always make a plug before I get into other stuff, is if anybody's interested in donating their time, want to help out, um, the Surfrider has a Palm Beach County chapter. They meet in Del Rey every other month. It's the north end, south end of the county. Um, they do great work. They have a lot of programs. We're currently looking for people to help them do water testing. They fill in the gaps for the state's water testing program to make sure beaches like Delray Municipal Beach are free of bacteria. Very important because the state only tests twice a month for Delray. And well, we could use them to test every week. Would help us to know before we go literally to the beach. This is what we fight for. So Surfrider is an all-encompassing ocean conservation group. We don't really deal with the animals. There's so many great places doing work, Reef Institute, Oceana. Um, so we focus on fighting plastic pollution, ocean protection, mainly from the threat of offshore drilling in our Gulf. Um, we still have a lot of members on the Emerald Coast that their businesses, their families have never recovered from the Deepwater Horizon spill in uh, 2011, 2012, around then. Um, beach access. Huge deal, if you guys don't know. Uh, dry sand in front of homes is all private. We do not own the beach in Florida. Um, people can have you called for trespassing if you're sitting out in front of their homes on the dry sand. That happened in 2017. Um, coast and climate, 
big thing. Erosion is a deal in Florida. Um, there's a lot of easy band-aids we put on it with beach renourishment, replenishment, but there is no easy answer. There's no one solution. Um, so we advocate for that in different regions. We have our volunteers. We empower them to talk to their city council, their county, the state, and really help those solutions, especially for Florida. And then, probably my favorite and most important one, is our fight for clean water. Um, clean water is a right we have as human beings. Everyone deserves clean water from your tap, from your rivers, the ocean. Um, very big deal. I personally am very advocate about that because I got staph infection last uh, year here in Delray Beach. I was fishing for snook, opening a season, waiting in the water, went to the hospital next morning, and literally at afternoon, Delray put up the double red flag for high bacteria. But that shows the gap in state testing. Had they tested the week before, I would have known that, probably wouldn't have sat in the water not catching fish for a few hours. So it's called fishing, not catching. Um, these are just some of the examples I have of those five tenants we fight for. This is actually Palm Beach Island, if you don't know what's been happening up there, but some very wealthy homeowners are literally putting barricades on the beach to stop people from accessing their public land on the wet sand. Um, Volusia Flagler, this was after Hurricane Matthew took out A1A. Um, if you've ever been up to the Flagler Pier area, there is literally beach, no dune, road. It eats away. We built Florida in a bad way in the past. And not to blame anyone, but we didn't know these things. We didn't understand that our barrier islands are dynamic structures that change over time. They're not static like the mainland can be. They change, inlets open, close, roads get washed away. Um, trash, I don't have to talk about plastic. I think we're all aware of that problem. Offshore drilling and of course, clean water. So these are, I'm gonna kind of go over the different activities our chapter does, um, our chapters, I should say. These are things that, again, if anyone's interested in helping out, this is what Surfrider does. All volunteers, we do cleanups um, all the time. We have one coming up for the International Coastal Cleanup, I believe up in Boynton. Um, last, or 2021, we did nationwide 1,230 cleanups. We collected almost a million, uh, oh, 170,000 pounds of trash almost of half a million items of trash. You guys know what the number one item we might pick up off the beach is? Cigarette butts. Oh. Number one item. We collected two million cigarette butts worldwide in the last 10 years. Um, it's literally out there. It's everything, they have chemicals. They're not made of cotton, they're plastic. They're made of plastic fibers. Um, they're in everything in the ocean. It's just horrible stuff. This is a really cool picture. This is our Treasure Coast chapter. Um, I went up and helped them, but a guy during nesting season found a little piece of rope on the beach, tried to pull it out of the sand. Not a little piece of rope. It turned out to be a two-ton mass of commercial uh, vessel line. Um, it took us about five hours and 20 people to dig it out of the sand 15 feet down. It was, uh, it was monumental. So it was a lot more work than we had prepared for that day. Um, there are beach cleanups in the first coast, in the Keys. Just a really important thing. I mean, we're all aware of the ocean trash problem. There's 150 million tons of trash floating in the ocean. You hear that statistic a lot, but there's also the same amount of trash on the bottom of the ocean. So half the trash floats, half the trash sinks. So there's about 300 million tons. 8 million tons of trash are added every year to the ocean. Just to give you guys a quantifiable image of that, that's a dump truck of trash every minute of every day entering the ocean. And why I always tout this and why Del Rey is you know, very, not, I shouldn't say responsible, that's the way, very important to understand this is that 30% of all the residential trash comes from coastal cities. So if you add up all the cities in the US, coastal cities are the most responsible for that trash. And we should be stewards of the environment because it's just easier to get there. You know, all drains lead to the ocean. You see someone drop something off in the middle of, you know, West Del Rey in about a week, that will go down storm drains, that will get into the ocean. The wind blows, balloons, everything. Um, plastic is not only a problem for our beaches and the way it looks, it's a problem for our health. They're finding plastic in our bloodstream, in our lungs. Um, these are things that might cause issues for people that we never could find a disease cause for. We could never figure out what was happening. It could be from the chemicals in plastic. It's in our seafood. It's very creepy that it's now invading our food, our health. Um, plastic never biodegrades it photodegrades, it gets smaller and smaller pieces, it affects corals, it can get into their tissues, um, it's in 
I won't tell you the sea turtle statistic, but it's pretty much in every sea turtle in the ocean, they have plastic in their stomachs. Um, you know, it's, it's just bad. And there's so many different alternatives. We talked a little bit about recycling earlier. Recycling will not save the world. It will help. It is not an excuse to consume and use more plastic. The first two R's, we know the three R's, the first two R's are reduce and reuse. Recycle is the third. So that's why it's up to us to change our habits, to reuse something, to reduce, before we can say, oh, I recycled it, no big deal. We need to do that. And as they talked before, we need to recycle right. My old condo hated me because I was the guy taking the bags out, putting the pizza boxes back in the trash. There's things that we don't realize that can contaminate a whole thing of recycling. We have to do better. Um, cleanups are great for awareness, but they will not save our beaches. In a, literally a day, that trash could be right back on the beach. It is not gonna happen. It is a great way to take responsibility to make change, but we need real action also at a legal level as well. Um, these are some of the breakdown of the items that we collected uh, in 2021. You could see cigarette butts, number one. Um, what's really interesting, and I know you've probably seen a lot of beach cleanup groups out there. Um, a lot of people are helping out, doing their part, cleaning up beaches, but we really like to say Surfrider goes beyond the beach because cleanups are great, they won't save the world. But what we do with these statistics that we collect is we take our volunteers once a year to Tallahassee, I take them to DC, and we meet with our congressmen and women, we meet with the current administration, NOAA, and we show them these statistics. We can say, hey, this is what we're getting off of our beach, we need to do something. Um, a great story is the cigarette butts. Um, we were one of the many groups that used this data to lobby our state Congress and Senate um, to pass uh, last year HB 105. If you don't know what that is, that allowed cities and counties to say no smoking on the beach, no smoking in our public parks. So that's where the real work comes in. We can take that volunteer action, we can bring it to our leaders and say this is what's happening, this is what we need. And HB 105 was bipartisanly agreed on. And in Florida, that's amazing, that's amazing. No one, now it won't stop smoking, you can have a cigar on the beach to the chagrin of everyone around you, but it will stop filtered things, things that have the pollution. We're stopping pollution, not your ability to smoke. Yeah, let me know time, because I can ramble. Oh, cool. All right, so that was our beach cleanup program. Another awesome program in our fight for pl against plastic pollution is our ocean-friendly restaurant program. If you guys have ever been plugged for Lionfish Del Rey, they are our Del Rey ocean-friendly restaurant. Um, we have, not a lot in Palm Beach County. We are the strictest ocean-friendly restaurant program out there in the country. Um, it is a little tough to get into our program. You need to not use bioplastics. Sometimes bioplastic can be greenwashed. There's a lot of mislabeling with the words compostable, biodegradable. These words are not regulated. You can call something biodegradable. You see the little ASTM code? Those are just certifications. There's no proof. There's no real life data that something is gonna de decompose or compost in the ocean under normal conditions. So we don't really support bioplastics, we don't condemn them, but there are better choices than not. Um, local foods, no plastics, uh, no to-go containers, polystyrene, things like that. Um, this is a great program even if you're not part of the chapter. If you are eating at a restaurant, you're like, wow, this restaurant really cares about the environment. They're really doing good. Send them our way, tell them about this program. I've been trying to get Brulee on this because they are amazing with what they do too. Very great stuff. And we have, Del Rey has their own green um, business certification, which is another great program and stuff. And, and that's also too, when we're out, one thing we can all do is when you're out, when you're going out on the Ave, when you're going to eat, seek out these restaurants, support them, say something to them, thank them, say, hey, I saw you had a green certification or an ocean-friendly restaurant sticker in your window. Thank you, I, I do appreciate that. Let them know that not only are they doing this for their own benefit, that you are happy they're doing it and you will patron their place more. You know, it's us supporting these businesses, supporting that, that's where we can make a difference as well. Um, our ocean-friendly gardens, so, this is a great thing, um, especially here in Delray being coastal. We have a program where we certify gardens ocean friendly, re retention, uh, permeability, conservation. A lot of people don't realize just slathering turf all over your property is not great for the environment. Um, you are just literally just putting grass out there. The water consumption of turf is insanely high compared to native species, xeriscaping, maximize your lawn. 
You might have to be, have a little more of a green thumb. Landscaping does require a lot because native species thrive in a native environment. Um, but these are things that you can do to help your neighborhood, your water, your ocean. Um, it is shown that native vegetation holds more nitrogen, phosphates, more nutrients than turf can. And turf requires a lot of other things. Um, having natural vegetation also promotes pollinators natural animals to come, native animals to come, thrive in their environment, just really help out. Um, I always love, I was just actually walking by the old delivery dudes headquarters right over there. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but they have, we tried to, cert we certified them. There's an ocean friendly garden right in front, all their native vegetation, cocoa plum, they have native things. They've landscaped simply to maximize, I mean beauty, but also the water, the environment that they have. Um, you know, you see community greening, planting uh, cypress, in swales, not only does it help with nutrients, absorb water, it sequesters carbon. You know, that's very important as we try to have to zero emissions, as we try to reduce those emissions that cause incremental climate change, that hurt corals, everything else that we've been talking about today. Very important program. In fact, uh, Palm Beach County has this as well. Um, I talked about our tenant of clean water, fighting for clean water. We do that with our Blue Water Task Force. I mentioned that the state of Florida has the uh, water testing program. It's called Florida Healthy Beaches. Um, not that they don't do great work, but it is severely underfunding. It has not received full funding in over a decade. Um, currently in South Florida, they test uh, every other week, so they test twice a month. And then if you go into the northern part of the state, they only test seasonal. And I think as Floridians, we all know, we go in the ocean all year round, not just seasonally. Um, they test twice a week for Enterococcus bacteria. Um, that's not always the most dangerous thing out there, but it's the first indicator. If that's somewhere, then they know the worst stuff is out there. Staph, or if you've been hearing Vibro, um, the flesh-eating bacteria. Florida is the number one place in the world for that to be caught, unfortunately. Tampa area, not saying anything against Tampa, but a lot of runoff issues. Um, Clean water, you know, if I have one thing to say about that is there's a lot of blame cast in different areas when it comes to our water quality issues. It is not 100% the agriculture in Florida that's to blame. I know a lot of people like to say that is it. I'm gonna say it's about 60-40. 60% agriculture and the way we've managed our Florida watershed in the past. But 40% is us, is the things that we do around the house. Um, old homes, especially along like the Loxahatchee River in Palm Beach County that are on aging septic systems that they haven't dug up these tanks in decades. They're leaking cesspools. Um, that is especially why we see a ton of pollution along the western banks of the Indian River Lagoon. All these homes in like Valkyria, Florida, they're all an old septic. So, you know, that's too, when you're looking at real estate, if you're talking to friends, you like, you know, you really should get off those old septic systems. There's better things in place. Check out the Surfrider Foundation. They have options. They fight for cities and try to get them grants, federal funding to help convert their old systems into more modern stormwater treatment areas. Um, this is our Florida Keys chapter. They're doing testing out there. We fill in those gaps for the state so you essentially know before you go. So Blue Water Task Force, I mean, filling in gaps wouldn't do anything if we didn't tell the public about news. Um, one of the major things that we are fighting to change in Florida legislation is the alert system. It is a nightmare from this point to hearing there's high bacteria to getting the city to tell people there's high bacteria. That process can take an entire day. Um, Delray has problems with that and it's not their fault, it's just the legality of who has to be informed. You all heard about the July 4th sewage spill in Boynton Beach? Did you hear about that? Oh man, right at the bridge, they had 12 million gallons of sewage spill into the water and they did not put the warning out till three days later. We have, uh, the city will tell, I'm not saying the thing, but the city will tell you that, oh, you know, it was contained, but 12 million gallons can't. We have tons of reports of people getting sick at Beer Can Island, the little island uh, west of the inlet. Um, there's no warnings there, the flags are on the beach. They closed the public beach down, but they didn't put any news out. They just had one sign at the bridge saying, don't touch the water. Um, big deal. It's just hard for the city to say, hey, we can put down a news without getting approval, time, and things. So that's what we're fighting. We're fighting for the city's right to just say, hey, bad water, call the lifeguard station. Pop that warning out. Better safe than sorry. Um, 
So we take all these programs, we do all this work, and then we have our campaigns. Campaigns are when our chapters want to fight for change, whether we're talking about a plastic ordinance or we're talking about the Willard Task Force. Um, we really empower our chapters to do a lot of great work. I'm going to call him out because he's in the back right there. But Tom Warnicke right over there, he actually founded the Palm Beach chapter back in the day. Just uh, announced that he is a inductee to the Surfing Hall of Fame. Really cool. The Eastern Co Big deal. Big deal if you're a surfer. Lifetime deal. So really cool. Um, but the Surf Rider chapter does so much work and stuff. Uh, this one I'd like to point out. This was just last month in Key Largo, um, a beach access campaign. If you've ever been to the Keys, you know they don't really have beaches down there. They have little cuts in the roads that end at a little beach to walk down. Well, an HOA was trying to reclaim one of those cuts that have been public use for 60 years. They said that since COVID, um, which has happened all throughout the country, more people go to the beach. And then, oh, they're kind of loitering and they're bothering us and we have this nice home and then there's people just hanging out all day. Well, they tried to reclaim it. They went to the county, they hired lawyers. It was almost a done deal. Our chapter stepped in and we got our group, we got the public involved, and Monroe County luckily held up their pledge to not succeed any public beaches. Um, I wish I could tell you that's the only time, that's all our victories, but it's not all victories. It happens a lot. Um, so these are things that we fight for. These are things that we need for our environment. I want to really fast talk about our Stop Sewage Pollution campaign. This is the most important thing about clean water. Um, Yes, we said companies, agriculture, but you're not going to change that overnight. Uh, the average person cannot just simply fight, you know, big agriculture in Florida and say, hey, we want you to do better. We want this or that. It's up to us to really look around our homes, look at the things that we can do. Use lawn friendly chemicals. I shouldn't even call them chemicals. Use natural substances to help your lawn. Pesticides, you know, fertilizer, composting, wonderful stuff. Um, roofing. Any chemical that just runs down your driveway into the road washes to the ocean, you know? So there are a lot of things you can do, little things that you can beautify your property, but also decrease that runoff, decrease that chemicals, um, upgrading from septic to sewer systems. Even sewer systems are flawed too, because obviously when it heavy rains, it does run off, they can't manage all that water. So just, if we have less chemicals and less things around our home, that's less runoff chemicals leading to our intracoastal, leading to our beaches, staying around the coast, keeping our water clean. Big deal over in California, the border has uh, a lot of sewage issues. The Indian River Lagoon in Florida, Tampa Bay, these are all areas that our water quality is just really bad. And Florida is known for their beaches, for our coast. It drives our tourism industry. It's a billion dollar industry. What hurts our tourism on the beaches also hurts our oceans. If coral reefs are dying, that's industry. That's business for the Keys. People make livings off of corals, off of the tourism, the ecotourism. We need to make sure we're responsible for our own land, not just the companies and the foundations doing work or the ones hurting it. All right. Just lastly, these are some activities that we have with our chapters. This is our Miami chapter. They do dune restorations for South Beach. They hold the permit for Miami. Um, not so much planting invasive species. Um, Florida is a wonderful environment for plants and animals to thrive. They are literally moving scavolia every day from our dunes. Um, the problem with those bigger plants is that they don't always hurt the dunes per se, but they're a terminal species. Once they grow, nothing else can grow. They shade out everything, their ground cover ruins stuff. So it's important whether it's an invasive or sometimes things like sea grapes, things, we have to make sure we trim them. We have to make sure they're out of there because we need that biodiversity to come back. Because without people, what would cause that diversity to come back? Fire. We don't let fire just happen. Lightning strikes, we don't want that. So we are, have that responsibility to manage our environment, not just to let it grow out of control, but to make sure we are managing that diversity for our dune health. And that's what protects us the greatest. Delray does not have a ton of storm issues. Let me see my time. Oh, perfect. Not a lot of ton of storm issues because we have some of the beautiful dunes I have ever seen. Well diverse, well structured, beginning, middle, end. It's a great work that we've done and I think the blue star designation has shown that. Um, mangrove planting in Puerto Rico, we have a Rincon chapter. I'm going uh, tomorrow morning to check them out, hang out with them for a few days and make sure they're doing great work. Um, this is our 
whole Surfrider network of US and DC. We met with the Biden administration, Congress, um, the Senate, really cool. 200 volunteers all just storming a Capitol building. It is really funny to try to get a surfboard through security. It is the weirdest thing to see and no one knows what to do with it, but it does fit through the machines. Um, and then that's us in Tallahassee last year. Um, just really talking about it, I will say, everyone is concerned about clean water. They know what's going on, they wanna help, um, and it starts with us. 